Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. So today I'm going to cover probing with the SILX7 and probing macros. So really what I want to cover here today are a set of macros that are now freely available for everyone to go grab from GitHub. So I've been collaborating with a gentleman named Justin Gray from the Facebook group. Again, the SILX community has been great. And it's awesome to be able to collaborate with somebody to bring to the community a set of macros, which I think will be a nice quality of life improvement for anyone who has a touch probe. A, you don't have to go spend money on a third party screen set if you don't want to. And B, I think it will alleviate some stress when it comes to buying the style. I know one of the considerations I had was how well is probing supported and am I going to be able to probe my stock or my part like I was able to with my Tormach? The answer is yes, you can. And you can do it free of charge using the macros that myself and Justin have sort of came up with. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over some of these macros just so you can see the magnitude of what's available to you. And then I'll jump on the Sile X7 on my machine and I will show you how to execute a couple of these macros. So again, thanks to Justin for creating the repo. And then I went in and sort of refined a lot of the macros, provided error checking, some inspection reports so you can actually take simple measurements while using the macros. <clears throat> and we made a nice probe config macro. So you can go to one file and you can set your feeds, choose which tool your probe is, and set everything to whatever specific unit you use, whether it is Imperial or the metric system. Again, the macros should support either or. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the macros here. So again, I'm just going to briefly scroll past the beginning here. I'm just going up and then back down to sort of show you the magnitude of the documentation that's available to you. So it will show you how to go ahead and set up and calibrate your probe. So sort of starting here with the, the calibration routines, you have the ability to calibrate your probe and Z using a one, two, three block. If we scroll down here, you have the ability to calibrate the diameter of your probe using a one, two, three block, or you can calibrate the diameter of your probe using a ring gauge. So if you don't have a ring gauge lying around, again, don't worry, you can calibrate the radius using a one, two, three block as shown here. <clears throat> and then what's also nice is you'll notice Every macro has a syntax, which is shown here. So it's the G65 followed by the name of the macro and then a series of arguments. And along with that, we provide an example of how you would call this macro in the MDI. So you'll have to come up and you know read the paragraph that tells you what each of the arguments are. And then again, you would just copy and paste that into your MDI and then essentially customize those arguments to whatever you need for your particular part. And so again, I'll show you examples of that when we do jump over to me running my style. So moving on, what we really want to dig into here are the probing routines themselves. So we have the basic probe X, Y, and Z routines available. So shown here, we're probing from the left side, but you can probe from the right side. It doesn't matter if we look at the macro syntax in the examples, you'll notice the B is the probing distance. So if that's negative, you can probe from the right side of your workpiece, or if it's positive, you can probe from the left side of your workpiece that particular distance. And if you fail to reach the part in that distance, you know, it does do error checking. So it will pop up a box that says, Hey, you know, you need to increase your distance or look at what you're doing because you failed to probe in the specified distance. So again, those are your simple probe X, Y, and Z routines. We then jump into sort of the more advanced routines where you can start centering on the center of your workpiece. So we have a probe X and a probe Y. So you can center an X and Y on your particular workpiece. 
What we also introduced here is the ability to produce an inspection report. So this is really just a little window that pops up. Again, you'll see this when I run the sile, but it will pop up and it will give you a measurement for your part. So not only will you center, in this case, it's, pro, it's probe X web. So we would center our WCS and X to the center of this piece. We would also tell you what the length was that was measured. So moving on again, probe X web, probe Y web. We now have a probe circular boss. So again, the same thing with the probe web where you can enable an inspection report. So after you so the routine will again probe and set your WCS to the center of this circular boss. It will also tell you the diameter at the end if you again enable that argument. And if we look here, the Q argument is what enables that inspection report. So I th I thought that was a good choice not only can you center your WCS but you can also sort of use the macros I shouldn't say sort of, you can use the macros to go ahead and measure your part after you've machined it if you would like here is a probe bore macro so you can go in and again probe the inside of a bore set your WCS to the center and then you know produce that inspection report will tell you the diameter of what was measured moving on to the probe rectangular boss so again you can probe x and y center your wcs to or make your wcs origin the center of your part and provide the length and width width of which the probe measured Moving on, we have the ability to probe a pocket. Again, similar to probe rectangular boss, except this time you're inside of a pocket, so you can set your WCS0 to the center of that pocket, as well as produce the inspection report if you choose, where it will you know, measure the length and width of the pocket. Moving on, we have X slot. So here you're just measuring a slot in the X direction, we also have a Y slot where we are measuring a slot in the Y direction. All right, and so now we're gonna finish off here with two, probe, two corner probing routines. So the first one allows you to probe one of four external corners. And as you can see, you can specify the distance to move away from the corner in C and the distance to probe. And D. So again, all of the the arguments to the macro are explained here. MDI examples, and here in a minute you'll see me running running a couple macros on the X7. And finally, we finish off here with the inside corner. So not only can we probe the ex external corners, we can probe the internal corners of a part. So that's pretty much it for the macros. Again, I hope you find them useful. Please go and take a look. Feel free to reach out to Justin or myself if there is ever a case where you think you could improve or refine the macros. I know something that I look forward to in the future is when I get a fourth axis, I would like to add probing routines to automatically find the center of rotation and to probe an angle in Z and essentially rotate the fourth axis such that your part would be parallel with the spindle. So that's something, or I should say perpendicular to the spindle. So that's a couple of probing routines I would like to do if I get a fourth axis. Another thing that we might try to implement in the future would be automatic wear comp. So I think it would be cool to be able to go probe Let's let's just use this example, a rectangular boss or a circular boss. And then if it's oversized, you could specify a tool number and then go update the wear in the tool table. So that way you could essentially, you know, use your wear comp to walk in that critical dimension just using a simple routine, simple probing routine. So 
anyway, I hope that helps. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we will jump over to me using the Sile X7, and then we'll go ahead and go over my probe setup, and we'll run a couple of these macros. So I hope that helps. See you soon. All right, so here we are in front of my Sile X7, and today we're just gonna briefly talk about probing, and then I'll display some of, or I'll show you guys some of the, the macros that Justin Gray and myself have been working on. So first, this is my silver CNC probe. I purchased, purchased it for, I believe, around $1,800 right after I purchased the machine, just because the Sile option was around five grand, which was you know, a little too expensive for me at the time. So I went with the silver CNC. Uh, the next thing we'll cover here is how I installed the receiver. Uh, so there's the receiver. And so if we look up here, you can see there's this little cable gland I installed. There was actually a hole here from the factory. Again, all I did was put that gland there. I did receive, um, the factory guide for installing the Pioneer probe and it wanted me to drill a hole back here and then run the cable through the channel. Again, this hole already existed so I didn't feel it was necessary to go ahead and drill another hole. So that's where my receiver is. It's been working fine for me. <clears throat> and then if we come over here, sort of behind the controller, hopefully this isn't too shaky. All you do is you run the cable sorry all you do is run the cable again through this channel and then down through here into the back of the control box so what threw me for a loop is I thought that the connections for the probing would be in the electrical box behind the machine it's not it's actually right here behind the controller so that's where your probing signal where you would you know hook in your probing signals to the controller so you have to take all these screws off just kind of a pain but that's what you do and then now in terms of the control itself the only thing that I had to do is we'll come over here to maintenance I'll press the maintenance key you'll notice that I am in level 7 so when you're in level 7 I believe uh, this hardware map will show up so if we click that key you'll notice here on 62 it says probe signal and you'll notice that there's a column over there that says reverse. I believe that's how you change the normally open, normally close, depending on what probe you had. So I had to change that. So if I come over here, sorry, grab my probe again. I'm just gonna put it in here so it's next to the receiver. I'm gonna press the probe tip a couple times. And again, we, we should see that light blink. There we go. So there we go. So that's really all there is to it. So what I have here for you is a one, two, three block. So what I'm gonna do is run, uh, you know, the probe rectangle routine. And that should go ahead and probe this, center us in the center of this one, two, three block. And then there is an optional inspection report, which pops up a little window and then tells you what the measured length and width is. So we will go ahead and do that. And then well, other thing I have for you over here, sorry, this table's a little bit of a mess, is a GoPro case I was working on when I lived in Texas with my Tormach. And so what I also wanted to show you is just a probe pocket routine. I thought this would sort of be a, a cool part just to go ahead and probe. So we'll probe the inside pocket there. And then again, we'll also enable the inspection report so it will pop up the length and width of the pocket. All right, so here we are roughly centered on the one, two, three block, getting ready to run the routine. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So all I'm going to do is switch to MDI mode, and then I'm gonna come up here, uh, make sure that you press the position key, and then right here, the MDI key. So I'm gonna press MDI. So this brings up my MDI, and guys, it's very straightforward. You'll, not you'll notice that there are a lot of semicolons, so the semicolons comment out the routines that I don't want to run at the moment. And then if I just delete a semicolon, I can run the routine that I want to run. So I can keep all the routines stored here in the MDI. And again, just uncomment the one that I want to run. And you'll notice there in orange is the routine we're gonna run. It's fairly simple, G65. Again, the name of the macro. 
and then all you have is a list of parameters. Those parameters are all documented in the repo. So you want to go read the documentation and all that's there is 54 for G54, the length, the width of the 123 block, how far we want to probe over the edge, and then Q1 just lets us print out an inspection report for the length and width that we measured. So now all I'm going to do is press the login key and then we're going to come down here we're going to press cycle start and then there we go the probing routine has begun <clears throat> so bear with me here this uh, will take a few minutes so there we're probing in X and now we're going to start probing in Y and again I do have because of the way that my mod vices are on my Pearson, Pearson palette right now, the one, two, three block, you know, is length, lengthwise. So there we go. It finished. There's the inspection report. So I measured in X two inches and it looks like three tenths. And then we'll call that three inches and two tenths in the Y direction. And so now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and press input so that will clear your little pop up there. And then if we open the door, not only did we, we post the inspection report, it will also center us in X and Y right there at the center of the one, two, three block. So that worked beautifully. So again, that's the probe rectangle routine. What we'll do now is transition over to the probe pocket routine. All right, so here we are about to try the probe pocket routine. So my probe tip is inside of the pocket and roughly centered. So what I'm going to do now is again go over to MDI. So we're in MDI mode. Press position, MDI key, and there you go. There's my MDI. And again, all I've done is uncommented the probing routine that I want to run. I am unsure of the exact dimensions of this pocket. It's been a while since I made this part. So I just put 2.5 and 3.5 for the length and width just to make sure that, again, we go ahead and probe the walls of the pocket. So with that said, let's go ahead and press log in. And then we'll come down here. And again, we will press cycle start. And then we'll come over here to the action. So there we go, we're going to probe both walls in the X direction. Beautifully done, and then we'll transition to Y. There we go. And so now we will center and place our WCS origin at the center of the pocket. And then again, if you have the inspection report enabled, then there you go. So again, I don't know the exact length and width of that pocket, but that's what my probe is telling me it is. So I hope that helps, and I will catch everyone in the next video.